So I'll go ahead and have a guess as to what just pissed me off today. <laughs> or tonight, as the case may be. Uh, if you guessed I did not get around to doing this until really frickin' late at night, then you are correct. It's 20 past 9. And there are two children around about the age of five who still have not gone to sleep. So if there are any sounds from them, then you'll know exactly why. They're very, very annoying. Alright, uh, one change has been made to the deck that knocked over Keith yesterday, and that is the removal of Stone D in favour of Shadow Ghoul. When you see the board here... Uh, yeah, you'll know, you know exactly why now. So, there's nothing that can really, there's nothing that can traverse the Labyrinth that can really get over 3,000 defence. That's kind of what I want War Shadow to do at the moment. Uh, this is actually not a bad ha opening hand. I've, I can I can go Gate Dig, sort of just guard this side of the board. I like to focus on this side because, I mean, I really should be focusing on this side because it's got the forest, but I've got two crush terrain blocks to sort of go through. That's basically why this is just a labyrinth in general, because you have to go back around and then around like a snake formation. So, for the time being, I'm going to go to the right because there's only one crushed terrain space that I have to deal with. And I guess he likes going to his right side as well, but whatever. Oh no, final flame. I think this guy also runs tremendous fire. Like, I think the whole point of the labyrinth terrain in general is to just sort of keep your opponent away from you, but yeah, it doesn't quite work out as well as you might like, especially when you've got something that can just walk through Labyrinth terrain. There are some that actually walk into it and then turn it into normal terrain, which is literally just, they shoot the shit out of the maze, blow it up, re reduce it to chunks, so that everybody else can go through. Anyhow, uh, I don't want to play that there. I would much rather play it here. So there's our Vermillion Sparrow online. Okay. I'm, I'm glad that I opened that gate dig because it gives me a whole lot more possibilities to hit prepare quicker. So there's one of his monsters I can go through Labyrinth. Obviously he's going to be able to do that since he's the Labyrinth ruler. I think I'm getting enough Pyros. Okay. Uh... I think I'll keep Vermillion Sparrow there for now. And I'll go ahead and Shark Molten Behemoth. I don't want to use Abyss Flower in case it like creates something stupid like freaking fire grass or something. I don't think it will do that, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I think I'll go ahead and put Behemoth down here. This means that as long as Vermilion Sparrow is in my terrain, my like support range boost, then that should mean at the very least it'll draw with a Labyrinth tank. The only other monsters he he runs that what goes through the Labyrinth train is Shadow Ghoul and Dungeon Worm. And you'll know it's a Shadow Ghoul because it'll transform as soon as it walks in. Uh, Lava Moth, like usual, but again, just as usual is the fact that I just don't have it. So... If that's going to be a Labyrinth tank, then we'll know because it'll just move two spaces straight through the thing and attack. Unless the CPU just isn't smart enough to do that, but I would not have expected it to, that to be the case. Okay, fire... I might as well put him on the board, see if I can draw into another warrior of some variety, because I've got Dragon Piper there as a backup pirate to make another Sparrow. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, that's a tank. It gets the plus 500 because it's a machine, so... At the very least, it's neutralized that, although I would love to have had an equip spell. That, I'm not too sure what that is. I don't know if he, how many of those things he runs. But I've got this, so I will sit on that. I, uh, nothing gets a terrain bonus from the Labyrinth terrain, so unless that thing just somehow has movement bonus, which is not going to get it from the deck leader because the deck leader has no abilities despite being friggin' Brigadier. So I'm just happy to keep Fire Yaro sitting there. I'll have to move him out of the way once I draw one of my forests, but War Shadow should be able to stop anything from coming in through the Labyrinth terrain. 
as long as I just sort of let it set up camp, which is exactly what I'm going to do. It'll have to go around it. Uh, violent rain, not the worst idea in the world, actually. The only problem with Violent Rain is that I don't have any of the other monsters in this deck that benefit it, at least not in my hand. So... Mm. And if I flip it up, I can get rid of the Crush Terrain, but... I'd rather have the Forest because, as you might expect, this guy does run the pieces to make Gate Guardian. And so if I gave him some Sea Terrain to work with, that's just going to benefit Sewagen. And it's just not going to help me in the absolute slightest, so... I think what I'll do is I'll get rid of Dark Beast. I'll put the Violent Rain down just... somewhere. Sort of let him chill out there or something like that, I don't know. That was a bit of an aimless sort of move there. I kind of do expect this to be a bit of an attritional sort of thing. But when that stuff like that happens that does a bunch of damage, then... That at least gets me closer to my goal. Okay, so now his Thunder Worm just sort of goes back there pointlessly. Oh, we've got Cocoon. Let's uh, go ahead and set that up. Except we can't because maximum number of monsters are on the board. Uh, in that case, let me go ahead and just sort of run over the Gate Dig in before the fuse. No, they don't. Alright, I'll have to move him back so that he goes into the support range here, but, uh... Get this fusion going. So, now that I'm actually in a position where this thing's not going to get hit with the Gorgon's Eye, there's the Cocoon just sort of chilling out there for a bit. I mentioned what you have to do in the previous segment, but, uh, I'll go ahead and go through it again. Five turns, it has to stay in defense mode. After it's being fl flipped face up, if it's flipped face up by the opponent's like attack or anything like that, then the turn count will not start. If it dies before those five turns pass, I get my Lava Moth back, and it just doesn't get surrounded by a cocoon. That's about all that goes for. Once the five turns are passed, it will become a Pupa of Moth, and then the next phase can commence from there. Random lag. Alright. What have we got? Can't make me your black dragon. I'd love to be able to get into a position where I can throw him down onto the board, but I've got Shadow of Eyes. Which I will go ahead and move that out of the way. Uh, Shadow of Eyes. Move Violent Rain into the sea where he's going to be a little bit more content. There's Shadow of Eyes. I'm gonna move Fire Yaro over there and move my deck leader forward. So then the next turn I can move my deck leader further forward and then just get past the crush. I can just play it straight after the crush, so he doesn't have to worry about that shit. God, those kids are fucking annoying. Thankfully they don't like come in and interrupt me when I'm on recording. Not that they really can because I've got a lock on my door, but. They could still annoy the crap out of you by, like, just randomly coming in for no reason. Okay, so we need to... I'm gonna go and get rid of this Violent Rain. I, it sucks because I gotta get rid of Shadow of Eyes in, in order to do it. Uh, uh, hello? Is that a Firecracker? Okay, so let it be known that's a Aqua Type Plus. I'm guessing either a Fire Attribute or a Pyro makes a Firecracker. Okay. I might as well go put that in the sea terrain, because that's a 2100 body right there. But uh, in the meantime, Meteor Black Dragon is being placed behind enemy lines. And I can ram over something and do some damage because he's had to put all these cards into attack mode. I can also throw down a Sparrow as well on my next turn. Actually, no, I can't because I only have four points. I wonder if Pyros get the find ability. There's a special ability that just lets you find a random hidden card on each board that you go, like, of each duelist that you go up against. And most of them are actually, like, the other immortal monster. Oh, fuck off. 
Well, that's just great. I mean, I've got Dragon Piper, so I shouldn't have to worry too much about that. i put you in defense mode because you're going to be useful in a moment, but... Unfortunately, it means I'm going to have to back the fuck up. Because I would definitely love to put Vermilion Sparrow up the front here. But i got to get rid of something in order to do it. So I guess we're going to get rid of Firecracken. I shouldn't have even I shouldn't have even moved. As a matter of fact, I should have summoned the freaking thing. What am I doing? My brain does not want to work for me today. I should have gotten rid of the fire cracking with wall shadow. I should not have moved back, and as a matter of fact, I should have just like put Dragon Piper behind it on the previous turn and done that. God, that's annoying. Okay. Uh let's go ahead and flip Dragon Piper. Removes the spell binding, and now Meteor Black Dragon can go about his business, except he can't move this turn for whatever reason. Okay, fine. Drunk Dungeon One's just gonna sort of stay put right there, which I'm fine with. Because, on top of being able to drop my second sparrow, the uh, Lava of Moth has taken its five turns to become a Pupa of Moth. So now I flip it back up into defense mode, because for some reason it just spawns in attack mode. And once this Pupa of Moth survives a single turn in defense mode, it will become a perfectly ultimate Great Moth. Pretty much by the time it becomes a Pupa of Moth, your opponent's going to be up shit creek without a paddle because even if they destroy it, like, in battle, you're still going to get a Great Moth out of it. So, it's quite good. Anyhow, Dragon Piper's purpose has been served. I may now fuse it with the Flame Swords and make a Sparrow. Give it the Salamandra, it's now 3400 beat stick, and should Dungeon Worm run into it, it's going to leave him with just 100 points left. So if I top do Kakazi next turn, I'm going to be freaking, it's going to be gold. You know maybe for a segment like this, where I'm going to almost certainly have background noise and stuff like that, I probably, like, should have reduced the gain on the thing because I could turn the volume up in post-production. Mm. I've got a really cheeky idea. Move my Vermillion Sparrow back and then flip my Great Moth into defense mode. I flip it up into defense mode because its ability reduces the attack and defense of all the opponent's monsters by 100 points each turn. So when I go into my next turn, that thing's going to be 100 attack points weaker, and then if I swing into it with Sparrow, then I win. That's basically how that's going to go down. And might as well, just for shits and gigs. Oh, I forgot. They fuse and make a Flame Swordsman. Screw it, flip the Flame Swordsman. I was going to put it on the board and flip it up and try to get a little bit more experience for my everlasting quest to get this thing promoted at least one more time before the end of the playthrough, but, eh, it's fine. So, both of his cards are monsters, so I don't have to worry about any long-range traps or anything like that. What do I draw? Salamandra. Fuck it. Just because I felt like it. I mean, I could have attacked and gotten exactly zero for the second time in a row, but screw it. Time for game. Sweet. Yeah. It's a bit attritional. I didn't even get my forests, but I was able to just cover field position and just get it that way. So I'm quite happy with that. Okay, final flames. Yay. Acid Crawler, really? I see Acid Crawler in there. Alright, I got a Monster Tamer. I think that's like a plus 300 for insects if it gets flipped up. So not the worst idea. Oh, can I line them up? Oh, damn it. I so wanted to line up three in a row at least once at this LP. Would have been awesome, but nope. He wasn't very nice to me in doing that. Yep. So there's the sixth rose card. Getting pretty close, and beating this guy is just going to open up the little pathway to take me to Pegasus. Who is the only remaining opponent that we have left to face because, well, at this moment, because beating him unlocks the person over there. 
and then we knock her over and then it pretty much just sort of triggers like the procession towards the end of the game basically so we don't have much choice we got to deal with this guy I don't like dealing with this guy because he's kind of obnoxious but I will try my best to go through with it uh, before we do that though thank Christ I remember to do this <laughs> all right what do we got 79 why does that number feel familiar? Whatever, it's Dark Elf. It's a card that does not have a code, so let's go ahead and redo it. 682, I think that's cutting it pretty close to the spells. It might actually be a pretty decent spell card. 682. Ah, uh, no, no, it's actually the very last monster on the list, which is Moisture Creature. Again, no code. 232. I believe that might be something along the lines of a beast type. Silver Fang, okay. It's literally the same as Wolf. They're literally the, the same attack and defense and pretty much everything. It's just they look different. I don't necessarily mind having Silver Fang. Like, it's still a pretty shitty vanilla monster, but at least I don't have to ever have to run Dark Rabbit in a deck ever again. Uh, what do we got? J7, G, M. GM LH six K. Yeah, there it is. Silver Fang. Do I am I running Wolf in this deck? Yeah, I am. Yeah, they, 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 that's what they that's what they are. They are literally just the very same thing. They're wolves. They're weird looking. Hell, they've even got the same type attribute. <laughs> There's nothing different between the two. But thankfully, it means that that can come out. I can put that in. There you go. Uh, let's just confirm. Yep, that's a plus 300 for insects. That might not be too bad in an insect deck, actually. I was trying to look for something that gave plus attack power to insects. I guess I forgot about this. I'm not entirely sure why a warrior type of all things gives you plus 300 for insects, but I'm pretty sure the same thing type of monster gives plants a bloody 300 point boost. I think it's like Wodan or something like that. I'm not too sure. All right. Uh... Segment's approaching 18 minutes raw recording, so I better stop it here. Next time, we're going to go after the guy who really likes his funny bunnies.